All right, Algebra 2, this is going to be a long lecture, so you're going to have to buckle up. For anybody who's watching this that was not in class, make sure your headphones are in and make sure you're actually working along the notes. Um, anybody who's using this as a supplementary tool, uh, do what you want with it, but pay attention. So um, we're going to talk about solving, solving rational equations um, and what we have to do to get there. So before I talk about that, though, I'm going to talk about a random problem. And you're going to be like, why do you do this, mister? And it's because I'm trying to connect to y'all the actual math you do know or you've at least been exposed to. So let me start here. I'm going to say 3 fourths, and again, you don't have to write this one down, but just pay attention. 3 fourths plus 2 over, I don't know, 5. Let's just say that. If I wanted to add these together, if I wanted to make these fractions do what I want them to do, I basically have to get a common denominator. That's the rule for doing this. So how do I get a common denominator? Well, I actually multiply 5 times 4. So what do I end up with? 20. And how did I get that? It's because I went 5 times 4, and I put it for both things. So now what you're going to do is you're going to look at this number, and you're going to ask yourself, what exactly did I multiply by this 5 when I went all the way down to 20? What did I multiply by? And the answer is I multiplied by 4 because there it is. There's the 4. That's what I multiplied by. That means I have to multiply this also by 4. This one got multiplied by 4. This got multiplied by 4, which means 2 times 4 is 8. And then this 4 right here got multiplied by a 5, which means I got to multiply this 3 also by that, which gives me 15. This is the method for getting a common denominator. Let me show you another method. Are you ready? I'm going to show you with the same example. So this time, I'm just going to cross this out. And I'm going to show you how to do this this way. To find my common denominator, it's 4 times 5. So I'm going to write my common denominator like this instead. I'm going to write it up as 4 times 5 under both. I'm going to write it up as 4 times 5 under both. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this first, uh, what's it called, Nom denominator? Right here you see this 5. Now look what it started at. It started at 5. Now I've added a 4 into it, by or multiplying a 4 into it. So I'm going to maintain my 2 up here. So there's my 2 from up here. And what did I multiply by? I multiplied by 4, not 5. I multiplied by a 4. So going over to this side, here's my 3. And now let's check the denominator over here. I have this 4 that we started with, but now I added a 5 to it. So now I'm going to go ahead and add the 5 up here as well, too. Now... You see I did them in separate terms. Now let's multiply it all out. What's 3 times 5? 15. What's 4 times 5? 20. What's 2 times 4? 8. And what's 4 times 5? 20. Didn't we get to the same place? So that's what's going on here with these problems. These problems are multi-stepped. So watch what's going to end up happening before you can solve these problems. Before you can do anything to solve these problems, you need to get a common denominator. That's just how this works. So let's talk about that. You ready? I'm going to redraw my equations, and I'm going to look at my fractions, and I'm going to look at this common denominator nonsense, and I'm going to see it. Okay, on the original one, I have x plus 1, so I'm going to write my x plus 1, um, and then this other one over here has 4x plus 5. So that's what my combination is. What is my common denominator? Well, check it out up here. When I had 4 and 5, my common denominator ended up being 4 times 5. So I'm going to do that, x plus 1 and 4x plus 5. Don't worry about evaluating it yet. We don't have to worry about that yet. We do eventually, but not yet. So there we go. Now, I had a 3 up here. So I originally started with a 3 and an x plus 1. There it is. What did I add to it? I added 4x plus 5. So now let's go to the other side. The other side, the common denominator we have, y'all, is x plus 1 times 4x plus 5. That's what it starts as. Now, check this 9 out. There's a 9 that's already there. Now, look at what we started as. We started as 9 uh, over 4x plus 5. What did I add to the bottom? I added x plus 1, which means I need to add that to the top as well, too. I need to add x plus 1. So, when you do that, here's what's kind of cool. There's two things that happen. Once you have this common denominator, you no longer have to look at the bottom. You no longer have to look at the bottom. You can basically be like, hey, we're kind of free of the bottom for right now when solving. So you can be like, all right, is my common denominator there? Yep. Is it there? Yep. Now you only have to look at this problem up here. So now that we're only looking up here, this says 3 times 4x plus 5. you got to distribute that. 3 times 4 is 12x. 3 times 5 is 15. 
And then 9 times x is 9x, plus 1, plus 9. And then this is a normal equation. you got to get your x's on both sides. Got to get your x's on both sides. Like on one side, I mean. That gives you 3x plus 15 equals 9. I'm going to subtract my 15. That says plus 15, so we do subtract. Uh, I end up with 3x equals negative 6. I'm going to divide the 3 on both sides. Divide the 3 on both sides. x equals negative 2. x equals negative 2 for this solution. That's what this equals to. Now, that's what it does, but check out what we have. We found x equals negative 2 for our actual solution. But we have this thing down here that says x cannot equal, x cannot equal. Why do I have these two blanks here? There is a rule. I'm going to show you. 0 over 1 equals 0. 1 over 0, these are just random fractions, equals undefined. Undefined. You can never have a 0 in the bottom. You can never have a 0 in the bottom. If you do, it breaks. So what happens is, check out our denominators real quick. I'm going to go to the original problem. Remember that checking for extraneous solutions? Go to the original problem. Sorry, I can't scroll up. And I have an x plus 1. I have an x plus 1. I'm going to do this down here. I mean with the purple color. I have an x plus 1 on the original thing. And then I have a 4x plus 5 right here. These can never equal 0. So what number makes them equal 0? You kind of have to solve for 0. It's, it's kind of weird. It can't equal 0. So we want you to solve for 0. It's weird, but it makes sense in hindsight. So I'm going to subtract this 1 on both sides, and I get x equals negative 1. So that means if I plugged in a negative 1 here, I would end up with a 0 on the denominator. We do not want that. So x cannot equal negative 1. x cannot equal negative 1. Now let's go check out this top one up here. 4x plus 5, I'm going to subtract the 5 on both sides, negative 5. That ends up with 4x equals negative 5. I'm going to divide the 4 on both sides, divide the 4 on both sides, and I get x equals negative 5 over 4. And because it's the denominator, see we're right here, it means x cannot equal negative 5 over 4. We don't want that. And so that's your full solution to this. Um, that's that, negative 5 over 4. That's the main lecture. That's the first example. If you can do this problem and you understand the, what's going on, then you basically are good to go in this uh, in this unit, but I'm going to work the rest of the notes too.